You can find the product featured in today's video and many more at Dan's Dinosaurs. Check out his site at the link in the description below and be sure to mention that Killer Shrew fan sent you. Now, on to the review. Hello everyone and welcome once again to Killer Shrew Fans Killer Toy Reviews. I know it's been a hot minute since I've done a proper review, but I'm ready to get back into it. And I think I'm going to start with this. It's Schwanzi, PNSO's recent Tarvasaurus. It's high time I talk about this figure. I'm ready to praise the ever-loving heck out of his fat, scaly butt. This was yet another pleasant surprise amongst the unending wave of new PNSO offerings. There was no build-up, no artwork tease, at least not to my knowledge, and when I saw it for the first time, I was absolutely tickled pink. I got it back in July or so, along with their new Utyrannus and Torvosaurus, and whereas those two were also fine figures, I just couldn't get enough of Schwanzi. I know it's not really even a new figure anymore, not by PNSO standards anyway. I lost track of how many new releases they've had since this one, but since I love it as much as I do, I still feel I have to talk about it. So here we go, it's Killer Shrew fans, Killer Toy Reviews, and this is Schwanzi, the Tomasaurus. Starting with the packaging, it's the same thing we've all seen a hundred times before with this line, literally a hundred times, nah, that's a bit of an exaggeration. Stark white background framing the glamour shot of the figure, a little orange blurb in the corner noting the species name and number in the line in multiple languages on opposite sides. And on the top, you have another shot of the Paint Master, along with the company tagline, and another orange blurb. As always, the figure comes with a little booklet, but these newer models are upping the ante by including some awesome art of the dinosaur in question. Here you can see a Tarbosaurus complete with a mane of feathers that are absent from the actual figure. You also get the standard plastic rod so you can make sure your dinosaur will stay standing over long periods of time. Personally, I'm not sure how necessary it is with this particular figure given how well built the legs seem to be, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Getting into the figure itself, the first thing I have to talk about is the detail, because I must say, I think PNSO absolutely nailed the look of the skin and scale work. A common complaint of their earlier theropods was that the integument felt exaggerated to the point that it robbed the figure of some of its realism, the exact opposite of what the intention was. Whereas it was never something that bugged me all that much, I can't deny that they appear to have come back and outdone themselves in this department, delivering something that still feels highly detailed but without appearing overdone. Although we've seen this on many of their 2021 models, including the recent Parasaurolophus that I adored, I do think this is far and away the best example. Every fold of skin helps to sell the movement of the model, and all of it has been saddled with incredibly fine scale work. I'll shut up for a minute and let the sculpt just speak for itself here. So whereas some may prefer the more pronounced texture seen on older figures like the T-Rex, I personally feel that this is a massive improvement, as it balances realism and subtlety with exceptional detail work. Now, another aspect of the figure that I must address would be the overall bulk. This is one fat Tarbosaurus, and some people have argued it might be a bit too fat, but me? I'll always enjoy a curvilicious Tyrannosaur. All that bulk really gives it some extra presence on the shelf, so I certainly can appreciate it for that. Getting into the nitty gritty of the sculpt work, you can see the work on the head here carries a lot of the same aesthetics of the recent T-Rex, with the larger ornamental scales lining the mouth there. I will say though, there appears to be more variation in scale sizes on the face here, with those bigger scales giving way to finer ones atop the antorbitals, and more medium sized ones adorning the areas around the eye and lower mandible. Above all of that, you can see the lacrimal crests have been done in a sort of mustard yellow, the same color as the eye. This is one area of the model that doesn't appeal to me. The paint feels a bit too basic and glossy to be realistic. Luckily, it's not prominent enough or sloppy enough to be a glaring issue. 
The figure once again lacks any form of extra oral tissue, instead having the teeth sprouting directly from the scales along the oral margin. Now, whereas I personally lean towards the idea of theropod dinosaurs possessing some form of lip-like covering, that doesn't mean I'm opposed to lipless models, since the science is far from settled in this department. The teeth themselves are decently painted with an off-white, and I appreciate the sort of tobacco staining they've added closer to the roots. It's nowhere near as realistic as the semi-translucent plastic we see in Reborn and Nanmu figures, nor is it as well executed as on the Paint Master since it seems to lack the advertised shellac finish. Still, it's a serviceable enough job given the size. The figure does feature an articulated jaw, which has the perfect amount of stiffness to it, allowing you to open it to varying degrees. Opening it to its full extent, however, affords you a look at the inside of the mouth, where you can see a nice tongue, as well as the nasal openings in the roof of the mouth and all of the quote-unquote notches that the teeth of the lower mandible slot into when it rests. Now, it might be a little out of order, but I can't go any further without first comparing the skull of Schwanzi with Wilson. You can see PNSO have captured the more gradual tapering skull shape of Tarbosaurus when compared to the wider and more angular skull of Tyrannosaurus Rex. That being said, the familial similarities are still apparent. I also want to take this opportunity to further highlight the massive disparity in overall sculpt style here. When pit against Schwanzi, Wilson's scale work really does feel quite exaggerated, proving just how far PNSO have come in this department. Now, that isn't to say that we should discount Wilson or shame PNSO for quote unquote dropping the ball, because that figure still stands among the best representations of T Rex in model form. I think the only other competition off the top of my head right now would be Rebor's upcoming Kiss or Tusk, whichever one you prefer. But even that's too early to call, if you ask me. But getting back to Schwanzi, there are a couple of other areas of note here. Tarbosaurus had the smallest arm of any Tyrannosaur proportional to the rest of its body, and that's captured well on this model, and further emphasized here by its ostentatious bulk. Still, PNSO have given the arm some apparent musculature, and have even painted those diminutive claws, which is an appreciated detail. The legs are massive, with rippling thunder thighs, bulky calves, and cankles that feed directly into those big feet. The feet do feel a touch too large, and part of that might come from the size of the legs, but as a positive note, I'm sure this extra thickness makes Schwanzi less prone to warping over time. I've actually taken to using his stands for my Yangchuanosaurus since he doesn't seem to need it. The feet themselves come across as very emu-like in appearance, with plate scaling on the back of the toes and smaller reticula sculpted throughout, even on the soles of the feet. The claws are painted in a simple dark gray, almost black color. As far as the pose goes, Schwanzi is captured mid-stride with his head held at a very slightly upturned angle. Now with the mouth closed, it looks as though he is scenting the air as he walks forward, perhaps on the trail of a potential meal. But with the mouth opened, it comes across more as that classic king pose, popularized by the old Carnegie theropods. I think it works well both ways, and all of the muscle tones, skin folds, wrinkles, and bulk really help sell the movement of the look. The paint job is simplistic, but effective. It's primarily gray tones over a cream underbelly with a golden yellow splash of color on the face. We can also see a sort of dusty tan wash that's been applied all over the figure, which really helps all that subtle detail pop and come to life. And it makes sense when you think about an animal that's been out outside roaming around in wind and all the elements, so it's a nice detail if you ask me. I also appreciate the semi-waxy finish in the lighter areas as it helps the material appear more like skin. It may not have all of the subtle nuances of the Paint Master, and some might consider it boring relative to other paint schemes, but it does put me in mind of pachyderms or other large mammals, which feels sensible given the size of the animal and the fact that it would be dirty living a life outside, like I said. Plus, I'm honestly just excited not to see another tan or brown figure with brown stripes from PNSO. They really mined that color scheme for all it was worth, if you ask me. Getting into measurements here, you'll see that Schwanzi comes in at around 12 inches long, or 30.5 centimeters in a straight measurement, and stands in at just under 4 inches tall, or around 10 centimeters off the ground. However, if you measure him along the subtle curve of his spine, he would actually come in at around 12.4 inches long, or around 31.5 centimeters. 
Tarbosaurus clocked in at 10 to 12 meters or 33 to 39 feet, which would put this figure nicely in that popular 132 to 138 scale range. Now for some size comparisons, first up, here's another shot of him and Wilson without all the movement as I attempt to highlight anatomical and stylistic differences. Now, I know I say that Schwanzi represents a marked improvement over Wilson, but to be fair, Wilson himself is a huge improvement over, well, Wilson. Here you can see the 2020 version of the original PNSO sculpt next to Schwanzi, and if this doesn't prove to you how far PNSO have come, then nothing will. Next up, here he is with Ashu, the Chianzusaurus, another Tyrannosaur from Asia. This was another of their 2020 releases, and you can once again see the disparity in style between them. Now, obviously, they are not in scale with one another, but it does make for a fun display having all these PNSO Tyrannosaur figures on the shelf with one another. Now, if you are interested in hearing my thoughts on that figure, I have reviewed it on the channel. Shocker, I know. And I'll be sure to leave a link to that video in the description. And here is the Tarbosaurus with PNSO's recent u Tyrannus Yichi. These figures were released at roughly the same time, and I actually got them in the same order, but like I said, I could not take my eyes off Schwanzi, despite the merits of the u Tyrannus. I know I haven't reviewed that figure just yet, but I felt the need to make this comparison so that I was hitting all the PNSO Tyrannosaurs I currently have. And here's a nice family shot of the group, and maybe I'm just crazy. But seeing them all together like this makes me hope for more of the family from PNSO down the line. I don't know, what do you guys think? To round out PNSO comparisons, I have to bring in Wyatt, PNSO's recent Parasaurolophus, and the most recent PNSO review I've done on the channel. I know, I suck. It's no Sorolophus, but it will do for now. Hint, hint. PNSO. Hint, hint. Anyway, Wyatt here stood as a turning point moment in PNSO's lineup, as after his release, we started to see this style of detail more consistently. Not only with their hadrosaurs, but also on their theropods. Yet despite how well I think they did with Wyatt, I can't help but feel they managed to outdo even their work on that figure with Schwanzi here. Almost forgot, here's Schwanzi with the massive Huanga Titan, because seeing that figure dwarf literally everything in my collection will never get old to me. Then, just as a fun comparison, here's Schwanzi with the Pathotherizinosaurus, and finally, after all these years, that pose feels justified. And for the heck of it, here's Schwanzi with the Mattel Massive Biter Tarbosaurus, the only other Tarbosaurus in my collection, as a matter of fact. And there you have it, everyone. That is going to do it for my look at the new PNSO Tarbosaurus Schwanzi. I love this figure. I really do. I know I say that a lot, but this one definitely is something special, especially when you consider the rest of the PNSO lineup. It's a standout to me. I think it really delivers on all the things we have come to expect and love from them, while also setting a new standard when it comes to sculptural detail. It might not be for everyone, given its extremely chonky nature, but if you ask me, this is a Dynomite rendition of Tarbosaurus, and I highly recommend it to anyone looking to diversify their Tyrannosaur family. It's quickly become one of, if not my favorite PNSO figures, and it just may be my all-time favorite Tyrannosaur model in my collection. But as always, I want to know what you guys think of this figure. Do you own it yet? Are you planning to pick it up? What has been your favorite PNSO offering so far, and why? Drop a comment down below, and as always, thank you so much for tuning in to today's video. I know I'm pretty backed up on reviews, so let's let me know if there's a figure you're wanting me to take a look at, and I will see about getting around to it. Until then, take care out there, and bye bye Thomasaurus.